Well, we don't really catch sea turtles. What we do is we have captures that are organized uh, in a way that we can get the max amount of data from animals that are at sea. Usually we wait for animals to come to us on a nesting beach, but in a lot of cases, animals like males, for example, or juveniles are out at sea. So to understand the, the population and the diversity and the type of population that we have here in Dominica, uh, we want to tag animals at sea too. Clear on the same page of what we're doing and sort of why we're here. Uh, Morrison and Simon are uh, sort of he helping head up some of our... What? Uh, Turtle, right there. Google. Shut up. Google. Google. Oh my god, you're kidding me. <laughs> nice size, too. Yeah. So what we do is we go out with uh, the guys from here at Dive Dominica and we uh, find a turtle, a uh, free swimming turtle, uh, usually hawksbills. We'll capture them, bring them up on the boat, and do all our data work up on the boat there. Uh, so for example, we'll measure their carapace length, their length, we'll uh, see if they can be identified as male and female, uh, which for juveniles you can't really do, and then we put a satellite tag on. Uh, that allows us to follow the sea turtle in real time and get a, an idea of its behavior and the habitat it uses and where it travels to, if it goes to nearby islands or it stays here in Dominica. Uh, then uh, what we'll do is we'll affix flipper tags, which are basically little tags that can get crimped with pliers, sort of like getting your ear pierced uh, in, a, in a sea turtle's flippers. And if that animal is ever caught again, if it's seen nesting again, each one of those flipper tags has a unique identifying number on it. And so we can take that number and identify it back to where we originally put that tag out. My name is Maddie and I'm from Canada and I came to Dominica in January to train freediving. It's a really great place to set up home base and train freediving because of the depth and the warmth. Uh, and the convenience of the platform. And what's made it really magical recently and very surreal is that when we're diving down we can hear the humpback whale singing. It makes it very bizarre for diving, but it makes it quite addictive because you want to hear them all the time. So today we were working as a team with the scuba divers because the scuba divers go down with tanks so they can breathe. And as a scuba diver, you can't come up quickly. I uh, dove down to 12 meters to get the turtle from the scuba diver and then came up to the surface with her. It didn't know its sex, it's too young to know apparently. Yeah, we're invited out as spotters. And then we arrived today and Jake was like, right, this is how you catch a turtle. We are like, eh. <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> So the satellite data, data that we have so far is pretty remarkable, and it tells different stories for different species. For the hawksbill sea turtles, the juveniles we've tagged, they stay very close to Dominica and don't go far. Leatherback sea turtles, the, the turtles that we tag on the east coast, after they leave here in Dominica, they go north through a very narrow channel. It looks like they all go through the same area, uh, and they get to about 700 miles south of Iceland, and then they turn south uh, towards the west coast of Africa before the tag finally falls off. They're really remarkable animals. They migrate thousands of miles. They are the deepest diving sea turtle. They can dive up to you know, 2,000 some feet. And they have soft shells that allow them to compress at depth. 